Hey everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to be the first part of a several part series and it's going to focus on how to find and calculate confidence intervals, sampling distributions, margins of error, and sample sizes. Alright, let's get started. Now, a confidence interval can be found to describe any population parameter. And what I mean by a population parameter is you might be wondering what a certain population mean is, or you might be wondering what a certain population proportion is, or so on. And as we know, we can't really go out and look at the entire population in some cases. Uh, just as a simple, silly example, Suppose we worked for a chocolate factory and they were wondering uh, how people felt about chocolate versus vanilla versus chocolate covered raisins and so on. In order to get an idea of what the entire population of humans might think, our company really only has the option to take a sample. And it's important to really think about that and make sure that that makes sense. A sample is a small subset of a larger population. And even though there are billions of people, when we test things, whether it be preferences for chocolate or vanilla or even new pharmaceutical drugs, we never have the chance to test those on all several billion people in the world. We generally have to do this on a sample. So when we test something on a sample, we're able to get information only about that sample. And we want to use that information to learn something about the population as a whole. And so one of the things that we can create is called a confidence interval. And we'll take our sample mean, for example, in this case, and we'll calculate something called a margin of error. And that margin of error will create a range inside of which we feel pretty confident that the actual population mean would be. So in other words, the population mean is out there somewhere. It's a value. We just don't know what it is. But if we take a big enough sample and we calculate a margin of error around that sample appropriately, we can generate, in this case, a 95% confidence interval that is surrounding our sample mean. And inside of this big interval, we believe that there's a 95% probability that the population mean is in there somewhere. Another way of saying that is we're 95% confident that this range is a good representation of the population mean. So that's where confidence intervals come from, and that's their goal. Their goal is to give you a good estimate of the population parameter without having to sample the entire population, which is generally not possible anyway. So let's see an example of how this works in action. Okay, in this case, suppose I have 5,100 statistics students and I show a mean time required to graduate for these students with a combined bachelor master's degree of 5.12 years with a standard deviation of 1.71. So in this example, my sample size is 5,100. The mean or the average, and in this case, the sample average years for these students to graduate is 5.12. So that's my sample mean. And the sample standard deviation is 1.71 years. So all the information that I've collected, the 5.12 and the 1.71, is all in reference to my sample students. The first question might be, estimate the mean or the average amount of time required for a general statistics student to graduate with this kind of dual degree called a bachelor's master's. In other words, do I have a good estimate for all statistics students? Well, the only estimate that I have right now is in fact my sample mean. My sample size is pretty huge, and this is the only sample I have, and this is the mean of that sample. So right now as it stands, my estimate for the mean time that it takes to complete this degree for all statistics students is my sample mean. So my sample mean is a good estimate of the population mean. The larger my sample, the better the estimate will be. If I had the ability to collect many samples and look at the average of each of those samples, I'd get an even better estimation of the population mean. But in this case, I have my one sample, and so this sample mean is the best estimate I have of my population mean at this point. All right, now what if I wanted to build 
a 95% confidence interval to estimate where my population mean might be 95% of the time. In order to do that, I need to figure out what my margin of error is, which we're going to call capital E. What is my margin of error? Remember that the confidence interval is actually my sample mean, in this case, minus the margin of error, and it ranges all the way to my sample mean plus that margin of error. So if I have that margin of error, then I can get that range or that 95% confidence interval. So it's this value E that I need to calculate in order to get that confidence interval. All right, now there's a formula to estimate the value of E for a 95% confidence interval for sample means specifically. This is the formula right here. The margin of error E is approximately equal to two times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. And again, S is the sample standard deviation. So for this particular problem, our margin of error can be estimated by multiplying two times our sample standard deviation, which is 1.71, divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 5,100. So when you make this calculation, find the square root of 5,100 first. That's 71.4. Then multiply 2 times 1.71. That's 3.42. And then do the division, and you'll get your margin of error, which is 0 0.048. I'm going to take 0 0.048, and I'm going to round it up to 0 0.05. That means that if I take my sample mean, which is 5.12, and I add on my margin of error of 0.05, I get the upper bound of my 95% confidence interval, which is 5.17. If I subtract my margin of error from my sample mean, I get my lower bound of my 95% confidence interval, which is 5.07. So my 95% confidence interval around the population mean called mu is estimated being in the range of 5.07 all the way to 5.17. Now keep in mind this particular formula that I'm using is specific for a 95% confidence interval about a, a population mean, and it uses a sample mean and a sample standard deviation. This 2 in front of the sample standard deviation is actually an estimate. For those of you who are interested in the exact formula, that's here on the next slide. The exact formula for any confidence interval, whether it be a 95% confidence interval or otherwise, is actually created by finding the critical value for a two-tailed test, either a t-test or a z-test, at whatever confidence interval you want. If it's a 0.95, you would look up the t-value, in this case, and you would find that that's 1.98, which is very close to 2, and that's why in our formula we actually use a 2. So this slide is here for people who want to look a little bit more deeply into not only how this formula was created, but also how you would create a formula or an estimate for other confidence intervals. However, this presentation is going to focus on how to do this using estimates and using 95% intervals. All right, let's take another example. In our next example, we might want to find the confidence interval for a proportion rather than for a mean. So in this particular example, we have a sample of 10,000 people. And 2,100 of those people actually prefer vanilla over chocolate. Well, if 21 of these people out of 10,000 prefer vanilla, the percentage or proportion of the people that prefer vanilla is 21%, or 0.21. What is the 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all people who prefer vanilla to chocolate? Again, we're trying to estimate or get a confidence interval around a population parameter, in this case proportion, using the sample information that we're given. So in our sample, we have 10,000 people, and of those 10,000 people, 2,100 prefer vanilla. So my sample proportion, called p hat, is 2100 out of 10,000, or 0.21. That's the sample proportion, my proportion of people who prefer vanilla.
Now remember, to find a 95% confidence interval, the value that I need to calculate is the margin of error called E. So in this particular case, the formula is a little bit different because we're using proportions rather than looking at means and standard deviations like in the last example. So in this particular example, I want to do the following. I want to again estimate the margin of error by multiplying 2 times the square root of everything inside of here. Well, what's inside of here? We have our pop, I'm sorry, our sample proportion times 1 minus the sample proportion divided by n. We'll take the square root of that and then we'll multiply by 2. So let's plug our values in and see what happens. Our sample proportion is 0.21. 1 minus that value is 0.79. Our value of n, or our sample size, is 10,000. So to do this problem, I multiply 0.21 times 0.79 first, then I divide by 10,000. That gives me this value. Then I take the square root of that entire value and then multiply it by 2. That ends up giving me 0 0.0081. That's my margin of error, and that's what I'm going to add and also subtract to my sample proportion to get my 95% confidence interval around the population proportion. All right, so this ends part one, and I'm going to go ahead and start part two.